Hey gearheads and welcome to GT Garage Talk, a discussion about all things automotive. I am your host, Corey, and on this week's episode, we're talking, well, we're actually talking a lot of things, from Nissan Z to Ford Ranger and the Ranger Raptor to mid-sized pickup trucks in general, lamenting how I am not currently sitting on the beach in Hawaii, checking out the new Toyota Tacoma, you know, not bitter about that whatsoever. But I am not doing any of this alone. I've got my good friend David Boyd from All Terrain Nation joining me. He too was invited out by Ford to Michigan to Ranger School. I got it wrong in my videos, but it was Ranger School to learn all about the new 2024 Ford Ranger. And whoo, it was a whirlwind of a trip. We flew in one day. Slept, got up, went and checked out the Ranger and flew out that next day. So we've got, we, GT Garage Talk, has one video out on the new Ford Ranger. All Train Nation, he's got many videos out on the new Ranger. And he was able to spend a little more time than we were with the um, actual trucks there in Michigan. So really wanted to bring him on and get his thoughts and opinions he has every intention of buying one for the channel. His current daily driving daily driver vehicle is a Ford Bronco. So this is very much in line with what he's got already. So very interested to get his thoughts and opinions on the new Ford Ranger. And without further ado, I'll bring on David Boyd. All right, David, it is so good to talk to you again, to see you since bumping into you in Detroit. How you been, man? Not bad, man. It was like a speed bump when I saw you. It's like, oh, doo -doo, there's Corey. <laughs> yeah. Where, Bye. Where Corey I'm, I'm, <laughs> you, you can stay there and film. I, I got to catch a plane. But no, before we get into everything Ford Ranger, because I know you've got opinions, uh, you may or may not have a deposit down. I don't even know at this point what you have deposits <laughs> on. But you had a little delivery in your driveway this week, as did I. And they seem to match up quite nicely to one another. What you got over there? Yeah, we have a uh, a tricycle, Corey. No, <laughs> oh, yeah? we got the new 23Z. The Nissan Z was delivered this week. And a manual transmission, of course, because if you're going to test a little sports car, yeah. you want to shift, right? Yes. So, funny enough, I, too, have a 2023 Nissan Z with a six-speed manual. Mine is white with a blue interior. I think they, like targeted me on that one you can see i'm wearing my blue <laughs> row your own way shirt right now and uh yeah i'm really digging the blue interior on mine but yours is blue on the outside and i'm torn i wouldn't do blue on blue i don't know if i'd buy your spec or my spec if i'm out there shopping. yeah so i have the i don't know what they call the blue but it's uh it's the performance edition i'm sure you got probably the same thing but uh yeah it's it's all black and it's probably more of a, what I would probably buy anyways. I yeah. was hoping, you know, because we never know when you get a press car. They could say, okay, here's the list of what you can get. But you never know exactly. And I've had a run of uh, the kind of reds that Nissan does. Mm -hmm. And I was honestly, I was kind of hoping for that red again. Because <laughs> um, I love that red color. And, of course, I got the two-tone roof. Yeah. The, is yours the two-tone yes. color? Yes. Yeah. It, and that makes a big difference on that car. But, Absolutely. yeah, I actually, I probably would spec this one out exactly what I got. Yeah, I I feel the same about mine. I, I I do believe as much as I love loud colors on the outside and they've got that lime yellow, whatever it is. I I had the proto spec uh, a few months ago, weeks ago. I don't even know. Time is <laughs> it's relative at this point. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a fun little car, but uh, we won't dive too far into it. I'm still forming opinions. I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, I just wrapped up when I was rushing to get up here and talk to you, and I just wrapped up my first drive. I took it out for about an hour and a half and uh, really enjoyed what I, I have driven so far. Honestly, though, I kind of wish they would have sent me the automatic. Yeah. Only because of – I. so I've done time with the Supra. Mm -hmm. You know, basically you've got a, you know – automatic there and paddle shift so i'd like to have had a something that i could compare directly to even though i love a manual transmission but i kind of wish they would have sent me that automatic 
Yeah. I, I was surprised that the proto spec that was a, borrowed from a dealer around here was a nine speed automatic. And I, I was shocked because they're only making 240 of those things. Mm -hmm. And to send any of them out <laughs> with an automatic, you know, those are going to be like garage queens and yeah. never see the light of day because 10, 15 years and, from now. They're and the be, worst color. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's the worst color no, ever. Like you could have done a nice canary yellow. <laughs> That that I is like that somebody car. left it out in the sun for ten years, and then oh, here's a new car. The only problem is the bronze wheels with that yellow. It just that that yeah. doesn't match for me. So. And I'm a big Nissan guy. It yeah. hurts me to say that. Yeah. Like I've been a Nissan guy for multiple years, and yeah, that when I saw that color, when I remember me and my buddy Danny when we were doing just Nissan, we did the uh, a live stream of the launch of that mm -hmm. car, and that was a big deal. And I mean, the fanboys went nuts over that, but I remember seeing that color going, okay, well, that's just, that's just the color to get some excitement. And then when they did that proto spec, I was like, Ooh, no thanks. Yeah. So, you know, it, t it takes all kinds, but uh, I, I would gladly take that bright yeah. color. I mean, my white one is turning heads as it is. It's a nope. pearl white. So it, mm -hmm. it does look spectacular in the sunlight, but uh, it's amazing how many people are like, wait, what's that? So what's well, funny. So I'm in middle Tennessee, home of Nissan, mm -hmm. and we still don't see them here because they're just still so hard to get. Yep. And yeah, no, I was in a traffic and people, you could just see people like whipping their heads like, Oh, that's the new Z. Like, and it's a, almost a year old now, you yep. know? And yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a head turner. I'm still waiting. I've only been actually not, <laughs> randomly spotted in a Facebook group called East Texas Spotters once. All the rest have been my brother spotting me when I go show off to him at work. But uh, it was in a bright lime green uh, electric Genesis. I got spotted before I ever made it home in that thing. And I keep hoping that one of my press vehicles is going to get me back on that page. This may be the one. This may it's the be. little things, man. It's just it's the little things. Little you victories. Know, the, I, I will say the first thing I had to do, usually I'll get I'll get some of these press fleets and I'll take them to my dad and show mm -hmm. him off. And his favorite that I've had so far is a Nissan Frontier. He loves yeah. that little truck more than anything. So I, I took the Z over there today and I took him on about a 25 mile drive and he was just grinning and grinning. He <laughs> he loved that thing. Yeah, let's see. I've taken my brother, my mom, my dad, my son, and my aunt. So that's and my wife. So that's six joy rides I, I have given in that car in just over 24 hours that I've had yeah. it. So, oh darn. Yeah. The first oh. problem. <laughs> I'll, I guess I'll drive it around again. Uh, I know my neighbor wants to ride. So, uh, some other friends have chimed in on Facebook. I'm like, look, you know where I live. You yeah. know I love giving joy rides. Just come over and my na my go. neighbors always comment. They always are like, you have the most interesting cars in your driveway and I don't get a ton of press. You know, right. I'll get random press for lead. I don't get a ton, but between that and, you know, we have a big Bronco and mm -hmm. stuff, but they're always like, they're always walking by and you'll see him peeking at the driveway. Like what's, what's he got today? Like what's over there. So I'm, I wish I could set a camera out in front of my house right now just to, cause we have a nice sidewalk here. Mm -hmm. People love to walk up and down and I would love to see people just like their heads turning at this car. Yeah. I've got mine hidden in the garage right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, poor old Nelly Cruz, my uh, ten-year-old Chevy Cruz has got a. She's kicked out to the curb, and we, we garage keep as many uh, of our press vehicles as we can around here, especially when they're electric. The uh, Genesis right. GV70 we had last week. Oh, I love. Well, I've got an Aria coming too down the road, and I'm like, I have to buy. I'm gonna have to buy the little 240 whatever charger so I can at least somewhat keep it charged. All right. Well, remind me. I I will send you contact information for the people who sponsor me. Maybe you can get oh, something nice. out of it. Um, nice. But huge shout out to Electron uh, EV Chargers. They have sponsored. Yeah, that the works. Channel. Yeah, that works. Yeah. It's like I knew. <laughs> Just plug that right in there, man. I have got, I've got two portable chargers and a permanent wall unit, uh, all from them, and they've been great to work with. So they oh, nice. make some good stuff, but. You mentioned Frontier. Mm -hmm. Perfect segue into the newest of the midsize trucks. They, it it seems like the war is now being fought here in the midsize realm. 
Yes. There's still a lot going on in full size, but that's really more the how powerful, how crazy can we make them with TRX, Raptor R, and all that fun stuff. What are your thoughts? You and I were both at the event in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Is 2024 Ranger everything that you'd hoped it would be? The so the the biggest but and and I was very appreciative of Ford you know, sending me up mm -hmm. there to check the, check the vehicle out. The only bummer I have with this vehicle so far is the fact that I've seen it for a year. Yeah. And so some of the excitement has been taken away by, because trust me, I, you, you know, I like midsize trucks is kind of my thing. That's mm -hmm. where I, I really dig into that and, and love the off-road segment of those. And so I've been, I've been watching anything on Australia's versions of this. I can dig into, especially the, the Raptor version. And so I was, I wasn't sad. I was let down because I think it's a really good, it's from the 23 to the 24 is going to be just night and day yeah. different. It's a, a major upgrade. Mm -hmm. Now I think the, the biggest thing is people don't always understand is there's always a price increase with new generation. Mm -hmm. And I know it's what a roughly about three grand, I think, which isn't ridiculous considering the inflation rate right now. And that's but about what I, Colorado saw too. So. Yeah, and, but I will say the spec that so they had an XL in STX uh, form mm -hmm. there that was that was probably that was the most surprising of them all was yeah. I knew kind of what to expect with the the Lariat and the uh, the Raptor but the XL version was uh you get a lot of nice features and they did I don't know if GM learned their lesson when Ford launched this Ranger globally or if just had to be coincidence, but both getting completely digital screens, mm -hmm. you know, your, your, your tack is now all digital. Of course, you're getting a nice big screen and for your infotainment, um, the game is on. And I've said it for about a year now that, I, that 24 was going to be the year of the midsize truck and man, we are seeing it and I'm happy. You know, we do know that, uh, Toyota, has something you know special coming whether what specs we still don't know but we do have a good idea what it looks like and may has been truck month mid-sized truck month yeah. man so i'm very excited uh what's to come it's funny that you bring up toyota because we're like i feel like we're two of the only journalists in the world not currently <laughs> losing it up in hawaii right now they actually yes. got to see it today as you and i yep. sit to record this uh, full information will be coming out on the 19th. So we're three days away from knowing something ourselves. I, I, oh, yeah. I pried. I was like, I know there's a media packet out there. Like, I would love to have something ready at, at, at Go Live. And they're like, nope, sorry, we, we've got nothing. I was like, okay. Yeah. That, that's the bummer of, of <laughs> course, you're doing a little better than me right now as far as like size of your channel and stuff. But that's the bummer. People don't realize they just think, oh, you're in the press. You just get everything everybody gets. And it's like, no, there's tears to this. And, you know, and you're in the home of Texas is the home of Toyota. And it's yeah. still hard to make friends over there. <laughs> I, I'm two hours away and I can't tell you how many events that I have not gonna, gotten an invite for that I'm like, I, I would have driven there. Like, no, no cost <clears throat> to you. Like, I'm cheap. I'm easy. You, you don't have to do much to impress me. Just make sure I can get there and get back and not yeah. have to worry about my flight or travel information. Nissan, Nissan did that to me one time. Um, of course, Nissan, Nissan North American headquarters is here in mm -hmm. Nashville. And uh, when they launched the latest Versa, they launched it in Nashville. And they flew all these journalists in. And it was Tommy with TFL. It was his first, I think, going by himself right. to, to do the thing. And I remember watching that video just being disappointed. Like, he was nervous. You, right. you, know, you know, this is hard. It's hard to put yourself out there. It, you know, mm -hmm. especially talking about a new car, we got, you remember the Ranger school, we got like basically 15 minutes of here's the highs of it. Yep. Now go speak about it. And you're like, uh, it's tough. So, but I do remember Nissan doing that. And I remember Wendy Orthman at the time was, uh, one of their big PR people over there. And I remember reaching out to her going, Hey, I would have drove, it's 20 minutes for me. Like all I needed you to do was let me be there. Yeah. But, uh, that much much like the toyota wins it's uh sometimes you know we'll earn our spots yes yeah, it just i i've just learned or i've come to the mindset that i'm just gonna keep asking what what are they gonna do say no okay yeah. big whoop i'm already not getting anything so that doesn't change well, and i've tried trust me i've hit up greg over at toyota yeah. recently i was like hey man remember me <laughs> it, it just reminds them again that we're out there that we're doing stuff that we want to cover their products and yeah, right. it, for the most part, we see it as like just 
like you've got it, just give it. But there are mm-hmm. costs and things and political things on their side that they have to work with within I their company. I just got out of a conversation with Nissan about the cost of, of vehicles and, and the my price because my vehicles come from Atlanta. Yeah. So it's it's four hours to get me a vehicle. So yeah, I, every once in a while I'm, I'm I'll pick at Nissan and be like, hey, why can't I have this? And they're like, look, man, yeah. there's a budget. And you're on the smaller tier of that budget. So just be happy and be patient. So yes. definitely. But I, I will say this, Corey, as we're kind of go back to the midsize trucks, you know, there's a full range now of midsize. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not back at when I was a kid, you got an S10, you either got a little four banger or the two way V6, which is still felt like a four banger. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't get a lot of options. There were bench seats. Mm-hmm. And now, like what I'm seeing when we did this this in the Lariat version, this new Ford, man, it's ridiculous how nice that vehicle oh, yeah. is. Like not, there's not really any options. I, I'm finding it harder and harder to uh, think of new options they could put in these these little trucks, man. You get everything a uh, uh, high end car gets. Yeah, honestly. So in our so short time with the trucks there. Uh, Holly and I covered the Raptor naturally because that's the one mm-hmm. everybody wants to talk about. And then we did the XLT, which if I'm out shopping, that's probably where I'm going to spend my money because it gets you can option up to the bigger screen inside. It has a smaller gauge cluster, but that's OK. Um, but the bigger infotainment screen and generally nice appointments inside. You're, you're not. Yeah like bottom of the barrel when it comes to materials and stuff like that. It, it was really an appealing trim for me. And the way you can option it up, the one we saw at the FX4 package, it looked really good uh, mm-hmm. with all that black contrast on it. So very interested to see build and price come out, really put them head to head against Colorado. I'm yet to drive either of them. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Opportunity. It's crazy. You, you had one of the first Colorado videos out there and yeah. And, and did gangbusters numbers. People were really interested in that. And yeah. And for you not to be in that truck, just that's crazy. I've done some build and price. Cause I love yeah. doing build and price yeah. videos on my channel. And like those, went, especially for trail boss, what, freaking ridiculous like people were so interested in that truck and yeah and then it's it's tough to get you know there's some channels out there like what general motors jeff and those guys who that's that's their bread and butter is just general motors and you're like hey man can you just break me off a little bit of that (laughs) that truck just a little so when i know you're you're a chevy guy Mm -hmm. too right you've been a kind of a fanboy of that brand yes i am i got my bow tie you can kind of see it right (laughs) there back behind me from my silverado but uh i did a poll on my youtube channel and this kind of explains granted uh, i had the same essential information everyone else did when my ranger video went up but explains a little bit of the differences between the performance of them. But I did a a YouTube poll. I said, which is more exciting, the 23 Colorado or the 24 Ranger? And I had the ZR2 Colorado that I took pictures of and did a video of in New York against the Ranger Raptor. So like the best of the best on both of them. And the way the final results came out on that was 5941 in favor of the Chevy. So I'm like, well, you know, my bias is showing the, yeah. the fandom uh, sticks around that understands what I like a little bit better. So <clears throat> it, it will be interesting to see. Uh, I have it on good authority that I will be behind the wheel of a Colorado next week at an off-road nice. event. So I'm very nice. much looking forward to that. But again, I really want to get behind the wheel of uh, Ranger. And then, you know, we've alluded to taco is right around the corner we will see a new tacoma and i have a feeling we'll see that one this fall at at the fall event we we both generally attend i have a feeling that's going to be there a couple of them will be there for that yes they can't not bring it to their own backyard especially well because me and you were one of the first ones to get to drive the new tundra Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it just so happened to they when they debuted at this press event that me and Corey both attend they just happened to have two in Texas there and they're like, Hey, and then somebody tore one up and well, dang it. You know, <laughs> we'll just look at that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But it was, um, it was interesting because what they had both the hybrid and the, the, uh, Non-hybrid, the yeah. other version, of course the hybrid wasn't going to be out for another four or five months, I think at the time. But, um, I remember Tim was, Tim Esterthal was talking on my show the other night. He couldn't remember that he'd actually driven the hybrid and didn't realize it. He was like, yeah, I didn't get to drive the hybrid till that spring. And I was like, Tim, you drove the 
hybrid <laughs> at, at the event. But, you know, cars, these all do start running together just a little bit. Yeah, I don't, uh, all credit to my wife, I don't know uh, how, <laughs> she's not into cars. I, I drug her into this. Uh, she's having fun with the experience. I mean, uh, our second press vehicle this week is a GR86, and uh, I'm yet to get her opinions on that one, but she loved the Supra, so I'm thinking baby Supra. Anyway, yeah. Uh, how she keeps all of them straight, I, I've i learned tell her the color and a memorable event that happened while we had it. Like, oh, you right. remember the silver Audi with red seats that we took to Dallas for our anniversary? That one. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's something that really stands out. She loved the Supra. She loved the Lexus LC. She loved the. She keeps talking about the Ford Bronco. There are two in my fleet that I am still yet to see, and that is an Everglades and a Raptor. And. Well, I, I know your uh, your your local press guys, the the brothers, they've had that Raptor, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. So you should you should be all over that one. Yeah, and a uh, little behind the scenes scoop here: they did not do it, but while they had it, the Everglades actually broke. There's been a, a lot of discussion about uh, the starters on those and uh, just how they're wearing out. And that's exactly what happened to this one. It just would not yeah. turn on. They came and got it on a flatbed and took it away in the middle of the night. And they have since gotten it back and got to test full off-road. It wasn't exactly what they wanted to do because they were going to test it when we were at um, Eagles Canyon Raceway and all mm -hmm. the fun stuff out there. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm still waiting. <laughs> like, they've had I was both like, of them. Well, I just... I got to do a short drive with the the uh, Bronco Raptor, and I was very disappointed. Really, very, I it was, I mean, because you think okay, it's four hundred eighteen horsepower. Mm. You, you know, it's going to be. It's obviously it's a V six. It's a twin turbo V six, so it's not going to have the rumbles that a V eight has, right. like the three ninety two. But yeah, it was it was just a little. I mean, I daily a Bronco, so mm. it's. I don't know. I just felt like the two seven in in the uh, lower trim was just a it felt quicker yeah. honestly than, than the bigger truck, but it's a Raptor, man. It's made to go jump dunes. And, you know, obviously it's, it's, it is, there is a reason it's more expensive than mine, but yeah, it was a little, the three Oh, and that was a little disappointing, which brings me to Raptor in the Ranger. Since I was slightly disappointed with the Bronco version, mm -hmm. you know, I am like, you know, you were asking if there's anything that I might be uh, a little weary of. I'm a little weary of that motor in that truck. Really? I have to be honest. Interesting. So just worried that it's not going to feel. As, well, you know, as... it, it's probably going to be like when, you know, the first generation Raptor was a V8. Was it Gen 2 that went to the V6, I believe? I, I, I'm i not big on F-150 Raptors, but you remember everybody complained. Oh, yeah. my God. It's, it's, and it was still faster and more horsepower than the previous version. But um, I, we'll, we'll see. I, I will say the, the launch color that green mm -hmm. that green on that thing is just <laughs> i think that might be the color for me when uh when i actually get to order mine so, so. you do officially have a deposit down on one correct i, I don't have i didn't have to put a deposit okay. down i'm 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 you know in this industry you kind of learn certain dealers you know might want to be your buddies and certain ones don't mm -hmm. <laughs> i've i think i found a uh, a good dealership in michigan brighton ford there who is willing i for the past year they started a list because I pushed them. I was like, look, I want to be, I need to be the first. You know, I mean, you know how it is. If yeah. you're not first, you're last, basically. It's the yes. whole Talladega Nights thing. Yes. Um, and I, I, so I've, I've set myself up hopefully for success with that of, you know, they put me on the list. They, their general manager was like, we don't even have a list. And so the salesperson I'm working with, she was like, I, I'm your number one on my list. And somebody on one of my live streams literally sent me a shirt that says you're number one with Allie at Brighton Ford. It's it's hilarious that they sent me this because I've been talking about that truck for so yeah. long that, uh, you know, it, I, I am excited for that truck though. I will say that, but I'm hopefully, you know, the, the horsepower is lower than what it is in, in Bronco, mm -hmm. which is I'm assuming because the Bronco's heavier. Yeah. I'm sure there's a, there's a torque power band that they would like both vehicles to stay in. And I'm, I'm assuming the, ranger is a lot lighter than bronco so maybe that's well that's i know why. with uh trx and all the other hellcat powered everything's uh, in the truck version of that engine it was it is the least powerful 
essentially of all the Hellcat. Yeah. And they blamed it a lot on uh, exhaust back pressure and having further to run with all of that. So I don't, I wonder if it's more or less the packaging uh, that yeah. it's a little bit different in, in a, a pickup truck than it would be in Bronco or anything like that. I, I maybe, maybe. And, and I know I've had some, because of, like I was saying earlier, I, I've been covering this vehicle for a long time. I've had some Australians reach out to me and it's like, Hey, you're basically, cause their version gets 392 horsepower, whatever that translates into the strange math that they do down, yes. <laughs> down there, uh, the Newtons or whatever. But, um, they claim that the reason is they're they're more stringent on emissions down in Australia than they are here in America, which I find hard to believe because of the industry we're in. It just seems to be so beaten down with emissions. But yeah. um, may, maybe maybe uh, you know they're uh, we're gonna be about the same. But they they rant and rave about this vehicle, man. They love this vehicle. Of course, they got the first generation Ranger Raptor, which I thought was a great looking vehicle. You know, and then we got sort of we got a tremor package of yes. that, but uh, I like the last generation Ranger. I think it was a little too late for us to get. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think Ford had a plan with uh, Michigan assembly plant was okay. We need the, they killed cars and I forget right. what they were building there. I forget. They, I think they were building a car there at the time. So they needed to keep that plant rolling. So it was like, well, we'll just throw this Ranger in the mix for about three years and then maybe jump, you know, Bronco will jump in there and then, then the new Ranger. But um, um, where, so, where were you at, Corey, with the three? I mean, well, I got to see four, really, I guess. Um, the chrome package on the one, I think me and you talked about it there, was mm. there's a certain audience that in that red chrome package was, yeah. it was not for me. It was, those mirrors were brutal to look at. Just, uh, that's a lot, that's a mirror on there, you know. But, uh, <laughs> a mirror I thought, on a mirror. Yeah. The uh, interior of that truck, though, was amazing. The white kind of cream leather seats that they did in that truck was really nice. Yeah, for me, it it's the two I covered. I would either go Ranger, go uh, Ranger Raptor, go all out and get the top trim, the craziest, uh, I, or get the XLT. It was interesting to me. Granted, though, that is the extent of time that I spent in them. Yeah. So I didn't look at Lariat. I didn't look at uh, any of the other ones. I didn't even. I saw the blue XL down by the water. Didn't even get close yeah. to it. But I noticed Raptor had a secondary glove box in the dash. Mm -hmm. So does Lariat. XLT did not. I was like, well, that just right. seems weird, like that you wouldn't put the same dash in all of them. So yeah. just weird things like that that I didn't really get to explore all that much. Obviously, it's not a deal breaker to me. I mean, I, I'm looking around trying to figure out what on my desk I could have put in that small secondary glove box. But yeah. it just... Knowing where it fits on the hierarchy uh, and the pricing starts, I can't even remember off the top of my head. I had it written 30, down. 30, mid 30s, 36, 33, some, 34. Yeah, somewhere in there. Knowing that uh, XLT would be probably a, a nice little bump above that. You're flirting with 40. That mm -hmm. That's about as far as I would go unless I'm just going all in on Raptor. And uh, I kind of feel the same way with Colorado. Like, uh, trail boss is too much plastic for me. I know it was a little, cheap. it was yeah. a little cheap for that vehicle. Yes. Yeah. So for me, Colorado, I'm looking at Z 71 or Z 71. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, the, uh, trail boss is fun. It's interesting. It does have more power, but I'm probably not even buying the Chevy. I would probably go GMC, uh, just because they, Respect that one so yeah i saw the the gmc at the chicago auto show i think mm. you did a video on it as well and i for one shame on gmc for not having a better display that display that they had there was a little weak and and nothing it's expensive to do these shows so yeah. i'm not i'm not really picking on gmc about this but what was it just an at4 they had there and that was it um they they had a, quite a bit but they didn't like announce their presence like some of the other brands did i mean chevy had a whole ev section and then they had the mm -hmm. corvettes and then they ha they even mm -hmm. had the camaro which is dead may she rest in peace and <laughs> uh, just very interesting how huge chevy's booth was they did have two new 24 models they had a hd denali and an hd mm -hmm. at4 
They had the Hummer EV there in black, which even the TFL which was guys. The, what do they call that one? The X3 the, or something? Yeah, the X3. Which was, there was no, like, I don't know if I missed the press conference on that vehicle or what. It was just sort of out there, and I was like, well, what is what is this? It's There was no press conference on it for the, the Chicago show in general. It was announced with all the rest of them, and... I don't know if you remember way back when it actually came out. It was one of those staggered launches where they're going to give you the most expensive one first, which yeah. was that launch edition. Well, they're not technically going to give you that one because right. they've only built like they've built under a thousand of that vehicle, and they're over a hundred thousand a piece. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and then they were going to trickle down in trims from there, and so this the version we saw at the Chicago Auto Show is the most expensive one that normal people that don't have an in with a dealership yeah. or we're not quick enough on order night to pick up, but essentially it's the same truck. The, uh, yeah. It was just interesting to see it in black. I know Andre and Roman were all over it. I was like, don't you guys have one of those? And they're like, yeah, but this yeah. is a black one. So <laughs> they, they know but what, their, what but their audience the GM, will watch. The GMC booth, like getting to see that AT4 in in that little truck was nice. I definitely the interior is much nicer. You're getting what you pay for with that GMC, and it's hard to say that in the you know GMC when I was a kid was a carpenter's brand. It was not a luxury brand by any means. If if you wanted a starter full size truck, you you know you didn't want to pay for the Chevy. You went to GMC, and now they've turned that brand around, mm -hmm. and now like they've went you know it's basically the Cadillac of 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 trucks now and that interior of that thing is well worth the money I, I like the design i like the the change of like that um kind of uh khaki looking mm -hmm. leather mixed with the blacks and uh even all through the door the doors how they they played with that was real nice um i i'm still with that vehicle though out of all the mid-sized trucks i will say that's the biggest disappointment to me out of all of them i yeah. mean you can look at nissan and go well nissan is just being nissan the frontier is a great truck yeah. Um, I think it might be a little overpriced right now for what you're kind of getting versus the big boys. Yeah. Uh, it's still, I mean, if you want a, a basic honest truck, you know, with, with kind of less is more, right. the frontier is amazing. You get amazing, uh, fuel economy for a naturally aspirated V6 engine, which I'm, I'm a big horsepower guy and I like big engines. Um, uh, but the, the four cylinder GM's stubbornness to only put a four cylinder in that vehicle is such a disappointment to me because um i get it that it's expensive mm -hmm. you know to have options is expensive but they don't seem to bother you know they them and ford both like that oh you can add this option to this this like they're they're so their trim lines are so tangled of spider webs of what you can get yeah. and by the time you're done probably that trail boss would option out the exact same way that the AT4 would have them. Like, and then you got all this plastic versus leather. It's, con it's very confusing to me the way they're doing it right now, but motors, if the new ZR2 is coming out, obviously we know at the end of the month, uh, uh, the Bison right. ZR2 Colorado is coming out. Big deal, big right. deal because it's a reaction from Ford's Ranger. It's totally a reaction of like, okay, we're going to put 35s on this and Ford's not going to put 35s on the Ranger Raptor, which I think is a miss. I, I really do. I think if they should have done like the full size Ranger and did a 35 inch tire package, yep. 37, we could have done a 33 inch tire package and then a 35 inch tire package. They the were really the worried about that suspension travel because that was one of the questions that they was asked. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. But with the, the bison coming out, I think it's a reaction of, uh, okay, well, you know, sure. You're probably going to get the same 310 horsepower four cylinder in that truck that I don't see any reason why they would bump it up anymore. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll take you on with this because I I personally think the Chevrolet is a better looking truck. Yeah, uh, I'm not a. I mean, I I do a lot of Ford content on my channel because Ford does the most interesting stuff to me right now. Like mm -hmm. they still make a decent looking pony car. You know, mm -hmm. they or, or now does does this ever sell? We'll we'll find out. But the trucks, you know, clearly F one fifty is the king of the mountain for a reason. They yeah. they know that that really well. Um. But I think GM's design was really boring all through the 2000s, and they've just revamped it. And uh, Colorado is amazing looking. Yeah. Uh, even the 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 GMC I think is still a better looking truck than the Ranger. Um, but Ranger Ford is smart enough with Ranger to let's keep a little bit of F-150 in there because we we know our client base and we don't want to lose them in midsize trucks. Well, what was interesting to me going back to GMC was 
all GMCs get the wider stance. Mm -hmm. All GMCs get the high output version of that four cylinder. So yep. those two reasons alone are really pulling me away from the Chevy. But uh, then you've got Ford coming out and they're still giving you a V6, which no, number one and number two complaint of uh, Chevy Colorado on all my videos right now, lack of V6 is number one, followed by the lack of the fold down seat back, which is something the prior generation did. And now Ranger right. is doing and Ranger was like, yeah. oh, look at us. We're doing it. And so, I'm yeah, like, I don't know if you you had a great comment about about that full i don't know if you put it in your video or not mm -hmm. when we were talking was about what were you saying pets or something Dog there's that's some stuff deal. yeah um everybody was worried well, that, that they would put their dog crates in there and just having a stable base for their vehicle or for their pet in their vehicle was just a, a big plus for them and if you look under the seats on all of these trucks there's no flat load floor it's not like full size it's not yeah. like you just flip the seat bottom up and you've got all this room. No, they're eating into that with all kinds of different gimmicks underneath. So, well, speak, speaking of gimmicks, did you have? I mean, I know you were quick in and out with this vehicle, but if you looked under the the rear seats of that thing, that is prime for a battery pack. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you happen to notice this this particular space. I tried to. There was a little hole that you could see in there, and it's just hollow. Interesting. And I'm like, there's no reason for this because if you open, lift up the seats, they don't give you a lot of cargo options. Yeah, it's you know, not I mean, there's no little either. Room. Yeah, and so I was like, they're yeah. totally going to bring out a little power boost to this thing at some point, or they have to, right? Yeah, yeah, they're yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that was the whole reasoning behind Maverick Space Powertrain being a uh, hybrid is that they're trying to hit those fuel economy numbers, and yeah, they know the math on their end. They uh, They've got targets they've got to hit too. So very interesting. So we'll wrap this all up. We've kind of been all over the midsize segment. <laughs> uh, we've got, you owned, you own, still own. I think you still own a midsize pickup truck. You've got a Jeep uh, Gladiator. Nissan, old Nissan Frontier. Yeah. 2017. And then a Jeep Gladiator too, correct? I do still, I'm, it's at the dealership trying to go away, yeah. but yes, I do still technically own one. So um, Frontier, Gladiator, you've got your name on a list for Ranger. You think Colorado's a better looking vehicle and Canyon's a better packaged vehicle, mm -hmm. but putting your money where your mouth is, you go for it, huh? Uh, well, because I'm I'm old school, man. I, the idea, like, I'm never going to take the Ranger Raptor out to the dunes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I won't say never, but <laughs> it's not in my mindset of, uh, I would have to go to Michigan or out west to do that. Yeah. I don't have any, if I go through a, a local lake here in the beach, I might get arrested for it. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, it's not an option right now for me to do that. But so, but it's, it's the idea that that thing is 400 horsepower in a small pickup mm -hmm. truck is that's. My Nissan Titan, I had a long-term tester Titan that I owned for three years, 400 horsepower in that V8 of a full-size truck. Yeah. And this little truck is is going to match those numbers and have probably better torque numbers. Yeah. Like, I how could you not do that? And I will say this, though, I've, I'm sure you've watched kind of your videos and, and for those that even care, like, I obsess over numbers mm -hmm. of of you guys are watching, you know, I've, I've done some videos where I'm just like, it was kind of a throwaway video for me of just like, uh, this is what I'm doing this week. I don't really care about it. And these, the numbers are ridiculous of people that are interested in that. Mm -hmm. And then I put my heart into something and it's like <laughs> no views you, at all. Don't you love but it? I will say, so my Ranger Raptor videos from that event is probably my biggest video. It's doing pretty well, but I did a comparison of the Lariat versus XLT video mm -hmm. and it's almost neck and neck now with the the ranger video like ranger is a is a hot button that's going to be fun for for the first year and then people don't care about it yeah. and and i even think it'll show in sales that ford that first year is going to be lights out with rangers and i know they would like to keep it around five thousand they ever build per year right. um and after that people don't care you know because think about it i couldn't tell you the last time that i i love trx love to drive it i don't think about it yeah, like it would not be even Raptor F one fifty Raptor would not be on my list right now of like, oh, it's a cool truck, but the the XLT 
the uh, the lariat would be on my daily list of because they make it good. Like you said, they make the uh, what FX4 package and these mm-hmm. things. You get a lot of options there. At some point, my crowd has been fussing about trimmer. Where's trimmer? And I was like, you have to calm them down. Hey, yeah. man, this was a soft launch of this vehicle. They didn't show 16 different option vehicles here. Just they're letting us first look at these so you know trimmer's coming and i think trimmer is a really nice package i hope they would do trimmer like um chevrolet's done with the the trail Trail boss and just let it be a ranger trimmer and that's it don't i that's the one thing out of all these Corey. i'm sure i'm rambling too long but i i was saying earlier about all the packages the weird stuff they do that is one thing i will say i was nice to out of gm to do was just let us do a trail boss yeah just a trail boss. That's it. People, the name's catchy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you really look at a trail boss, you know, 1500, it's no more special really than much of anything else that they do, but that's a catchy name. And I wish they would carry over to Silverado that they did a, a WT, a trail boss, mm-hmm. you know, an, a higher end Silverado Z71, like slim these lines down, make it where people understand because walking through these, these, these Ford Rangers, as I did, you know, you were talking about the XLT might be the the best money. The XLT they had there bummed me out because it still had a key. It yeah, I noticed to... that too. I was like, "What in the world is it, this?" Somebody, I think I was on Ranger Six G, one of the forums, and because I like to keep an eye on what people are talking about, and somebody commented that from one of my videos was like, "How? Why does it still have a key?" Which me and Kelly scratched our heads on that one too. Of I don't get this, but it's one of those weird things. Well, you can package it this way, and then you get remote start and i'm like I, just simplify this man i understand the uh the xl that's a base trim truck you know let it be simple i yeah. get it a key, even though i think a key nowadays is probably more difficult for the man them to manufacture yeah. it cro- probably costs more for them to actually make that little solenoid for the key than it does a push button chip deal um but i would like to see xlt just just give me a push button on that i would the cost seats are great i like the uh the patterns that they imprinted mm-hmm. in the cost seats mm-hmm. matched if you looked at the door trim that it was in the side of the door trim where the handle was it matched in there um i like the dash that they put in that probably better than the uh, lariat and xlt if it just had a couple things i think that is going to be a home run for ford so yeah. it, it- I am here for it all day long. I can't wait for Taco to come out and see what all they're... I mean, they've teased us. They're still going to offer a manual transmission. No one else is really doing that. I don't understand how they're going to do that. They're the king. They can afford to do it. Uh, there's... Well, no, no, no. I mean, like, because they're talking about... I don't know if... Is iForce going to be just like it kind of is with... Well, no. It's not really an option in Tundra. Yeah uh really uh, what because i'm not big on i force max in the tundra yeah so. are they going to do an i force max version that uh, maybe a hybrid ish version and how does that work with manual transmission would be fun yeah but yeah. i don't i don't understand but yeah you're right toyota can they sell over two hundred thousand a year like, yeah they can do whatever them, they want <laughs> you know if you think about what what manuals take rates like less than five percent now i think five percent of toyota sales is way more than ford does of you know, uh, XL sells. Yeah. And they say the next generation of car shopper, what is it? Gen Z or who? Gen Alpha? No, not Gen Alpha. They're too young, but Gen Z, they're bringing the manual back. So yeah, I- I'm, I'm well, here people want to be connected. Yeah. You know, you've driven enough electric vehicles. Now they are so much fun the first hour. Mm-hmm. And then for me, they just start getting boring. Now I haven't driven the range that you have mm-hmm. of, of those, but the few that I've driven, they all seem to be about the same. I know what was it, the Genesis GV60? I remember, I remember you were like, dude, you got to push the the little Boost what do they call the button? Boost. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you got to try that. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it was. But I'm, I'm, I remember me and Kelly driving that vehicle, and I never released a video on it because I was so underwhelmed by that vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think because of the event we were at, you go through so many vehicles. Right. It was the last vehicle I did. I was just burnt out. But I remember just being like. I would probably never push that button. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. Electric are so, and I'm sorry if you have electric crowd, I still like the vehicles. I think they're amazing. I love the technology, but people want, want to shift. They want to feel connected mm-hmm. to the vehicle. Um, and that's why Dodge is trying to figure out how to put a transmission yeah. in the new challenge chargers. Yeah. They know that people want to feel connected to that vehicle. 
Man, I, there's so much on the horizon that, you know, I, I joke with some of my friends also in the business about, yeah, maybe we got in this five, 10 years too late and mm -hmm. we're trying to claw through all the weeds. Like it used to be the wild, wild west. And by the time we jumped into it, it structures had been formed, tiers had been made, and we're like starting at the bottom rung trying to climb up. But at the same point, we're here, we're seeing a, a pivot of the entire industry. We're seeing new crazy ideas come out like manual transmissions and electric Jeeps for crying out loud. Like who in the... Who would have thought of that 10 years ago? Who literally in the industry, not actually in the manufacturing side, but in press was like, you know what the world really needs? A manual transmission in a fully electric Jeep. We'll call it Magneto. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's one of those things. It's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to be part of. It's fun to help tell the story. But yes, I, I do. I love electric vehicles for their simplicity, for you push the pedal, it just goes. They make great luxury vehicles. If I were well, what's ever, that Hyundai, what was the Hyundai that Tia and everybody got to see out on the coast that the uh, big coupe? Um, oh, yeah. The uh, the, the it was a Genesis, ah, crap, oh, yeah. they but it was that big white convertible. Beautiful yeah. car, just a beautiful car. I, if I ever were to buy an EV, it would also be a luxury brand. Yeah. Because I think luxury and EV go so well together. The Kia EV6 GT showed that there can be a little crazy bonkers added mm -hmm. in because there's drift mode that Genesis had it too, but it was harder to access it in the Genesis. There's drift mode and all this kind of crazy fun stuff that they can do that you can still have a little bit of fun, but it's still not the same of hearing a loud V8 roar in front of you and all the exhaust noise and smell. Yes, and... yes. anytime I can get like 392 uh, Wrangler content does nothing on my channel. Mm -hmm. TRX does nothing on my same, channel, same. but anytime there's ever one there. I, I get to drive it because it brings such a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. And I really think like there's, you know, the audience that you're talking that loves probably an inner city, the downtown crowd loves mm -hmm. EV for mm -hmm. the simplicity. You don't need to service it, anything like that. I think if you were to ever get a great experiment would be to get that crowd who's hardcore Tesla or something like that. And you put them in a 392 and blindfold them and let them push that button and hear that rumbles. If, if it does not bring like some goosebumps to them, I like I think they're crazy. Like yeah. it, something about that truck or the they, made is awesome. They should just call it the dopamine button. You just push it. Yes. And it, it, oh, it yes, it does. It does things chemically in our cavemen brains that we we need in our lives that oh, dude, EVs can no replicate. Doubt. No doubt. Well, Dave, it, it's been great talking to you. We've been all over the board. I can't wait to see more. I know you from I know you had a conversation you had in mind, but sorry, I get rambly and just my brain goes <laughs> that, everywhere. That is exactly the conversation I wanted to have. Is <laughs> we, we covered it all. And uh, for my listeners who may not have heard one of our conversations on previous podcasts before, they can go check you out, alterainnation.com, mm -hmm. or go That's find you on YouTube. I'll link all of that down in the show notes. The popular social media places were probably there. We're not. We're not as cool as Corey. I, I don't have any. Uh, any. Uh, gear that I can. I can. Uh, pack in a, a suitcase. I can pack in something. But. Uh, you know. Uh, I, I'm on the socials. You'll yes. find Altering Nation, yes. Yeah, and I'll link all that down in the show notes. So great having you. Thank you so much for joining us. You've got to go record a live stream <laughs> right now, like this evening. So go get ready for that. And I, I'm just grateful for your friendship and getting to talk Ranger with you. And maybe we'll see each other at the Toyota first ride for the Tundra. Right. To, uh, that, that would be... I, yes. We'll see you there, <laughs> if not sooner. Yes. All right. Bye. And there you have it. As promised, we were kind of all over the place. <laughs> and, you know, that that's about par for the course. You know, there's so much going on in the industry from electrification to just stringent emission standards to new vehicles. And I really, really, really wanted to talk about Ford Ranger with David because... 
as I mentioned earlier, and we talked about in the podcast, he has every intention of owning one very soon. He is on a list. And me personally, I'm a Chevy guy. I, I'm big into the Colorado and the Silverado. I think those are really good platforms. Uh, I will be testing a Z Silverado ZR2 Bison oh so soon and can't wait to get behind the wheel of that. But mid-sized pickup trucks are really where it's at for me as far as overall size. I love me a good full-size pickup truck. Uh, I would have one in a heartbeat if the budget allowed for it and had a good covered place to park it because the storms here have been ridiculous lately. But need uh, just isn't there. If I were to get a pickup truck, both in price and size of what our family would really need and utilize most, it would be the mid-size pickup truck market. And Chevy, Ford, Nissan, Toyota, Jeep, they're all bringing their A-game, and it, it's a good time to be in the market for a mid-size pickup truck. So that's really all this episode was <laughs> ultimately trying to get to is, you know, it, it really is a good time to be in the market. There is a lot of similarity between all these pickup trucks now, and it's really, I think, going to come down a lot to brand bias and how much a specific feature is important to you. If you previously liked the Chevy Colorado because you could fold down the back seat back, well, maybe now Ford Ranger appeals to you a little bit more. So it's just a very interesting time to be in the market. But huge thanks to David for coming on and chatting with me right before he did a live stream. So go check out his YouTube channel, All Terrain Nation. Go check him out on all social media platforms and find him on his website, allterrainnation.com. He's a good friend. I, I love chatting with him and talking over with him. As always, you know where to find us and everything that we do. Go find us at gtgaragetalk.com or on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, everything at gtgaragetalk. But until next time, gearheads, bye. Bye.